Hey guys, so we're back with another video essay, but this time, like I said in my previous reaction, I don't know if I said it in my first one or my second one, I don't know which one I said it, but I said that I would also do video essays also on camera, so here I am today. Because, you know, um, it makes it faster to edit, and that's another reason why I'm doing it like this. So, yeah, I gotta get those videos out because I've been so behind because, you know, school happened, my graduation happened, and everything. And so, yeah, now I'm moving on to college, so it's crazy, man, it's crazy. Uh, so, let's talk, okay? Let's talk. So today, I will be discussing the Bratz franchise, and to just give you a quick like little rundown on that um so it's a popular doll line that we all love including me and that is the Bratz doll line so if you guys aren't familiar with Bratz it's a popular doll line that was created in the early 2000s and um, his name is um, Brian Carter I believe I may be wrong if I'm wrong I will insert it right here Okay, so I like switched his first and last name around. I did it backwards. Um, his name is Carter Bryant. Which, by the way, I'm going to like pause it right here and I'm gonna like talk about him more like in detail as a person because obviously excluding um, Chloe since she's white, but like the other three girls are like girls of color. So I find it very ironic how a man like him that is very questionable. Okay, so I wanted to go further in detail as in why I think, like, he's a very questionable man because, um, just, like, seeing, like, his first concept photos of the girls, it's just kind of questionable. Like, for example, let's look at, like, Yasmin, or should I say here, she was, um, called Lupe, and I'm like, that's that's her like the one with the orange red hair like that was her like um why is she white <laughs> like i just think like that like i'm not again look i'm not saying why latinos ex don't exist of course they do but like that takes out like the whole point of being inclusive though because um then it's majority it's just a lot of like light skin people in it you know and i wanted to go more into detail about like the whole thing with um how they made yasmin a white latina here it's because usually when you see like a person that is like latino like they tend to be like white in everything when it comes to hollywood so it's kind of annoying seeing that like his first concept like picture of her and she's white and so i'm just like <laughs> okay you know and i mean obviously knowing that this this took place obviously way back in the early 2000s and sadly like there wasn't as much like representation when it came to like brown skin and dark skin latinos so they tend to usually like heavily put more um white latinos instead in media so um that's why i just wanted to clarify that a little bit more just in case someone wants to come for me like please do your research like or just look at if you guys are of latin descent and you watch like you know novelas aka dramas that are in spanish if you guys seen those you even know what i'm talking about so if you look at it in that way it would make only um sasha to be the only like dark skin a uh, girl in the group so i think it was kind of interesting how he changed her skin tone afterwards i believe um but i do wonder why like at first his first uh, idea was to give her pale skin and red hair and all that stuff so very questionable and then like i'm like who's chloe because <laughs> there's one with short hair and bangs but that that one's next to of course yasmin um but i'm just like i don't understand like what like is this even brats i'm sorry like the only one i can well the only two i can recognize is sasha and jade which they're obviously next to each other but for yasmin and chloe i'm like that's yasmin and chloe confusion <laughs> 
but the point is i just find it questionable like with sasha like he made her a lot lighter here which is very questionable since she's obviously dark skin so i think that's also really strange that you know she was lighter so that's very interesting um and just in general like how i personally feel with him being a white man and obviously making their designs i'm not saying he did like a terrible job or something but it's just like you can still tell of course that there's some ignorance when it comes to some areas like for example like with yasmin or should i say here lupe um her name is very much like stereotypical in my opinion as someone who is of um, latin descent i'm mexican by the way <laughs> I just think like Lupe is such a stereotypical like Spanish name to have so I think it's kind of funny how he was like okay let me just um since she's well he said Hispanic but I'm like I don't think he understands that if he's referring to someone that is um Latino that means that of course you say Latino you don't say Hispanic in fact a lot of us um people of latin descent we don't like being called <laughs> hispanic although some don't really mind but other people do mind so i personally do mind i don't like being called hispanic so i think that was really strange that he referred to her as a hispanic girl when i'm like i think you mean latina but okay uh so i think that was very strange too and yeah just like her name i just personally think it was pretty stereotypical like her first name um and yeah, it's just very interesting. And then with Sasha, like, I would say my issue with her first design is that she was lighter skin. And obviously now she's she's dark skin. So I think that was very strange how, like, he wanted to make her a lighter black woman. Because, um, you know, obviously when it comes to dark skin black women, like, they tend to be not as represented compared to those who are of lighter skin. So I think that was really interesting that he also made that decision at first so questionable like i said questionable <laughs> um but now i'm gonna finally read what it says here on the screen so this is what it said on the concept photo it says here meet the brats the totally transformable teenage dolls they're four best friends from high school who love to trade clothes shoes and hairdos they come to school with a new look every day by simply popping off the hairstyle and shoes and exchanging them for one of their hairstyles and pairs of shoes or a friend's hairstyle and shoes um i don't that's shoes yeah it says shoes okay i can't read um you can create a whole new look complete the look by changing their pants or skirts for one of their additional garments each doll comes dressed in a trendy hip outfit with one or two additional pieces such as an additional skirt or t-shirt for mix and matching each doll also comes with two great hairstyles two great pairs of shoes and a cool backpack wow very very informative <laughs> i'm sorry it, that was funny that was pretty funny like that description was pretty repetitive and it was honestly funny to read out loud but that is basically what you do with the dolls though like that's exactly what you do but i don't know i just think like the first concept like of the four girls i think it's pretty questionable and i'm just very glad like they changed completely because what is this what is this like is this even brats uh anyway <laughs> uh let's move on but anyway, moving on. Um, and yeah, so it's a very popular doll line that tend to be like rivals with Barbie. You know, back in those days, those lovely days when Barbie was also really popular and still is like Bratz. We can move on to the actual franchise itself and go more in depth of the characters, the plot, the movies, because yes, I'm also going to mention the movies, not including the live action. We're not talking about the live action today because that needs its own video. And I haven't seen that film in years. I've only seen it once in my life when I was a child. And that was a long time ago. So we need to watch that again. And until another time. Because ooh, that film has so many problems. It's crazy. So that's why it needs its own video. And that's why I'm not doing it today. Um, so yeah. 
the movies, the animated movies. And we're gonna also talk about Birdeen and the Tweebles as well in this video. So yeah, this, oh, and the boys too. Cause I forgot to put this as a list of things I'm gonna also mention. I'm also gonna talk about the boys as well in their own section um, as well. So yeah, we're gonna talk about all of that and hopefully you guys enjoy it. Cause Bratz is a franchise I've always loved since a, as a child and still love till this day, but definitely it aged some ways not so great. And so that's why we're gonna talk about that also today. So let's get started. So to first start off the characters so we'll first talk about jade's character since um she's the first one listed i have listed on here and yes i will be going off and like on because i'm pretty sure you guys can see right here i'm not sure you can see the paper of the notebook in front of me i don't know if you can you guys can see it unless it's up to here i don't know but if you see a notebook in the frame like in the camera um yeah it's because i have my script here so if you see me going looking down and up because of that so don't mind me because i need to make sure i'm catching everything that i'm saying that i'm talking about in this video i say i want to make sure i say everything that's listed on here so yeah i'll be looking up and down so here we go so jade um at the beginning of the show she starts off as a teenager but now she's an adult um both her parents are alive and it's revealed that she is asian and in the live action, like I said, I'm not going to go too much in depth with the live action here, but I'm going to briefly mention it. Um, it stated that in the live action, her mom is Asian and her dad is white. But I wouldn't really say that's like her canon ethnicity. Because um, the thing is, it's that in terms of like the actual like franchise itself, they never specifically said if she's oh biracial or this and that. They only said that she's Asian. -y. Um, they never specifically said canonly, besides her being Asian, they never said anything else besides that. Um, so they've only, they never said like specifically what her ethnicity is. They never said like, oh, she's Japanese, she's Korean or whatever, like, um, like background of Asia she's from. They never said specifically, so no one knows for sure. It's just stated that she's Asian. And in terms of her being biracial, that seems to only be canon in the live action. So nobody knows for sure if that's true or not. So we don't know. Um, the creator of the Brats, he never said specifically what each of their backgrounds are, only except that she's Asian. That That's literally all we know. So, yeah. Um, and her nickname that she goes by is Cool Cat. Her friends call her that. And she is known to be the fashionista of the group. She's always talking about her outfits that she always has laid out. So yeah, she's a very, she's very big on fashion, which is something I really do adore so much because um, I also love fashion and I actually mentioned it in my um, comeback video, if you guys <laughs> saw that video, I don't know if you guys did, but in my video that I put out that was for um, my comeback video, which is a long time ago now. Um, I talked about how much I also would want to put videos about my um, love for fashion because I do want to also make videos on that as well. And that's also why I really love her character because I'm also a big fan of fashion just like how she is. And so growing up, I always really looked up to her in terms of that. And that's actually one of the reasons why um, she was one of my favorites growing up. Um, because I always thought like, oh my god, her outfits are so pretty and all that stuff. I want to be her, you know. But yeah, that's something I also really uh, appreciate about like the show and the movies is that um, they heavily focus that part of her. And so it's really great. Hi, how are you doing? You want to come to the camera? You want to be famous? Come here. It's my dog. I feel like I feel like I really do adore that part of her character it's just really like nice to see someone with great fashion sense and i love how like they put that like they heavily focus that aspect of her character in both the shows and movies it was really nice to see that especially growing up as a child um but of course they messed some stuff of her along the way along with the other three girls too and it's just like 
why did they do that? Why? Look who was in charge of the brats then. Um, but we don't talk about it, okay? Um, but what I'm basically talking about is when um, in the later doll collections, not including the latest release, which was in the 20, like it was the 2021, the doll collection. Um, apparently they took a lot of her fashion like qualities out of her character in like the um previous releases not older ones i'm talking about like the ones like in i believe it was the 2010s it was somewhere in the top 10s i'll insert a clip here hi i'm jade what's my passion fashion blogging if you've got passion show it in your fashion yeah. my passion by brad vip pass front row fast polka dots are my fave my passion by brad post it my friends say i was born to vlog brad's friends forever my passion by brad my passion by brad's each sold separately love jade click on jade's passion at brad's.com ask your parents hi i'm sasha what's my passion Fashion. If you've got passion, show it in your fashion. Yeah. My passion by Bratz. I love to be daring. Check out my design. So, so Sasha. Fashion <laughs> by Bratz. My friends say next project, runway. <laughs> Bratz friends forever. My passion by Bratz. My passion by Bratz. Each sold separately. Love Sasha? Click on Sasha's passion at Bratz.com. Ask your parents. Hi, I'm Chloe. What's my passion? Web design. If you've got passion, show it in your fashion. Yeah. My passion by Bratz. Check out the new game I designed. Geek is she. My <laughs> passion by Bratz. Light. <laughs> my friends say my brain is like a laptop. Bratz friends forever. My passion by Bratz. My passion by Bratz. Each sold separately. Love Chloe? Click on Chloe's passion at Bratz.com. Ask your parents. Hi, I'm Yasmin. What's my passion? Music rocks my world. If you've got passion, show it in your fashion. Yeah. My passion by Bratz. Headphones are a must-have. Ooh, let's post your song. My passion by Bratz. So rad! <laughs> my friends say I'm the fabulous DJ ever. Bratz friends forever. My passion by Bratz. My passion by Bratz. Each sold separately. Love Yasmin? Click on Yasmin's passion at Bratz.com. Ask your parents. They, they literally took out her whole like love for fashion and replaced it with like blogging and I was like um my girl's passion is not for blogging it's for fashion and that's just for all the brats too like they all obviously have a passion for fashion that's literally what they go by their slogan and so I'm like who on earth replaced her passion for blogging whoever was in charge of that you need to be fired. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, who was in charge? So that was definitely something I really hated. And I was just like... Who is in charge of this marketing? I need to know who is in charge. Who is in charge? <laughs> but anyway. But yeah, it was just so inaccurate. And I was just so confused as to why they did that. But thankfully over time, um, they changed it back to it being fashion. And I was just like, oh, great. That's good. And I'm just very glad I did that. Um, but besides that, I also do have other problems with what they decide to do with Jade and that being, again, her identity. Um, it's just that they didn't really include much of her culture besides revealing that she's Asian, but they don't, well, like, we don't know exactly what her ethnicity is. Like how I recently just said, like, previously about that we don't really know what specifically what her ethnicity is they only said like oh yeah her race is like of course it's asian we don't know her actual identity and so that's why it's kind of a little frustrating because we don't really get to see that aspect of her and i know some people would make the argument like hey like oh in an ethnic group not everyone is close to their culture like that but i'm like i don't think that's necessarily true because there's never like um, a late time to co connect back to your culture you know and so i feel like it would be cool to see her like whatever like like ethnic group that she that is from from asia it would be cool to see like whatever ethnic group that is and to see that you know like it would be so cute but they didn't sadly put that in and i was just like honestly disappointed um like they did what they could at the time and 
I'm just glad they did include um, like an Asian girl to be part of the main four, you know? Also, it would have just been great in general to see like her family dynamic overall. Like I would have totally loved to see like her mom or her dad. Um, and just if she had siblings, we don't know if she has siblings. Um, and just to see like their family dynamic, like that would have been so cute. I would have loved to see that, but we, again, didn't really get that a lot. And just in general with the girls, we didn't really get that. And it kind of sucks because um, family does have to do a lot with their characters as well. And I don't think people understand that, but it very much does. Like it really does add a lot to their character. And I feel like if we saw that, it would have done a lot more for her. Um, but I also want to just briefly mention going back to like the whole situation with her in the live action and how she was biracial. Um, it's not an issue if she is biracial and I have no issue at all of her being half white. It's just that um, the only thing about that, it's just kind of interesting and very oddly, it's just really weird in a way of how like Hollywood always tends to uh, when it comes to like people of color and more specifically I've noticed this with Asian people they always tend to make the main character or just someone of major focus in the series or movie to always be half white um, they tend to do that a lot with a lot of biracial characters and it's not just um, and it's not just those people that are biracial like there's so many other people who are biracial that are not half white they can also be half black also be um, Asian, they can also be um, Latino, they can be any eth like other ethnic group. It's not always just white, you know? And so that's why I find it interesting how they always tend to do that and it's really weird. And so I kind of don't like how they make her that. It's just so common, especially with Asian people. And when it comes to biracial children that are Asian, they always tend to make them, oh, they're also white as well. Like, why can't they also be, like, you know, also black? Or, like, or also, like, another, um, Asian group. Like, why can't they also be, like, you know, biracial in that sense as well? Like, that's just a thing that I personally think that needs to change with Hollywood, is that they need to understand that biracial just doesn't mean you are white and you're this other ethnic group. It's not just that. You can be white and latino you can be latino black like you can be those that that's literally biracial biracial literally means just two ethnic groups that you are that's literally what it means so i don't understand why hollywood can't get that to their head and that's why people think biracial means you're black and white when that's not true like that's not how it works always um, putting that as like the like the putting that narrative in front of people and telling them like hey this is biracial kids this is there are only black and white that is not true showcase more of like other biracial children that are not just like you know like half white so I personally think um, making them making her half white is a little questionable in the live action but like I said, I don't necessarily have like a huge problem with it. It's just questionable how often they tend to do that with Asian characters when they're biracial. It's just very weird. Um, but that's just, again, like that's just a general um, observation I've made. And you guys can very much disagree with it, but please, please be mindful and please educate yourself about these things because it is a huge problem and if you guys think what I'm saying is not true, you can look into that yourself and how often it happens. It happens a lot, so yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Sasha's character. So with Sasha, um, she's a black woman and just like Jade, she also started off as a teenager and later becomes an adult. Um, both her parents are alive and her nickname that she goes by is Bunny Boo. Um, she is known to be a lover for music, love that, and she also enjoys fashion, but really her passion is, like, of course, her passion is her fashion, that's why she's part of the group, um, but her other passion is music, and her personality is someone who is, um, short-tempered, bossy, and sassy, and I'm going to heavily emphasize this because I find this to be very questionable when it comes to, um, 
the way black women tend to be described in terms of media, like especially with movies and shows, this is very much common in their characters and it's very weird. Um, and so I'm gonna go into depth about that right now. So I really do adore Sasha. In fact, I love her so much. In fact, I just in general love all the girls to heart. Um, and I'm glad that they made her a black woman and very much glad that they made a black woman to be a part of this franchise in general and the main focus. But of course, they don't do it as great when it comes to the representation. Um, and just like, again, like many other black characters, they of course have to write her very stereotypically and sadly she falls into that category. And so just not making her have like a hot temper and be described as sassy is just very weird and it's just very much a stereotype and so i say that because if you look at like previous cartoons like from like the early 2000s going into the 90s and everything you can very much see when they have black characters they make them very stereotypical and it's really weird because obviously like those stereotypes tend to feed into what people think that black women specifically tend to act and it's really weird um and so i really don't like how they also put that like personality within um sasha's character it's very weird and i just kind of wish like they could you know they could have just not put that in her personality like it's very odd and so um that's something i would definitely say is a, a really big stereotype within her character and yeah it just sucks but another thing i also hate within um just in general the girls that are brown skin or dark skin and all like a lot of the characters in brax um that tend to be brown skin dark skin like sasha for example and yasmin um there is a lot of colorism and it heavily went on with like the concept art and as well as like some of the animated films like for example um i believe the film is called scar and silent i could be wrong i'll probably insert something if i am wrong so i was right that it is called um star and silent but um of course I want to go more into detail about what I was talking about with the colorism issue. I'm going to do like a little slideshow, I guess, here and just show you guys like different concept photos that they came out with during like the release of Bratz and all that stuff when for each um, their collections. And so it's, of course, like cartoon. So I'm going to show you guys that and how they um, drew them and their, you know, issues and all that stuff. So here's a good example of what I was talking about. So with this concept art, um, you see Sasha and then you look at Yasmin. So first off, Yasmin should be Sasha's skin tone. And Sasha's skin tone needs to be a lot darker than what it is in this picture. So if anything, Yasmin is not even this light. I don't know why they made her this light. She's not light skin. Um, she's very much brown skin, which is Sasha's skin tone. So if anything, she would switch with Sasha's skin t skin color, and then Sasha would be a lot darker than this. So, yeah, I'm like, what the hell? And of course, the other two are perfectly fine, because they're both originally light-skinned. But with them two, it's a whole colorism going on here. And there's a lot more with what, I'm, what I mean by this. Now, looking at the animated film starring and Stylin, you see Yasmin on the left, far left, and then you see Sasha at the very um, end the far right so same issue like S sasha should be way darker than this and same thing for yasmin she should be a lot browner <laughs> and like what like what did they do to them like this is not sasha and yasmin like what the hell and so um definitely i would also say for sure with sasha she should be a lot darker and i can't even say like oh she should swap no because not even like they're both too light to be even like to be even put into the brown category like no no or dark skin category like what is going on what is going on so again they failed them here in this animated film also and i also just wanted to add with sasha's character too i'm not sure if like the black community when it came to sasha's character how they feel about this and maybe some have 
talked about it but i'm not too sure but definitely if i have black viewers watching this and do know who sasha is please let me know down in the comments on how you feel about her hair being straightened because i do know that there were some people who have stated in the past that they wanted sasha to at least have at one point or at least twice in one of the doll lines for her to have curly hair since obviously a lot of um, black people they tend to have like, you know, their hair texture and usually it's pretty curly. You know, I'm not saying obviously there aren't black people who like to strain their hair. Of course, there's black people that also strain their hair as a preference wise. But it's just like, she also falls in that category. Like, we all know that when it came to him designing Sasha, since he's a white man, that he very much did not want to take that time to actually give her her actual hair texture, you know. And so it's really upsetting that obviously you know he did not care he did not want to put that effort into making you know black hair and so it's honestly really upsetting so um again if i have black viewers watching this please let me know down in the comments on how you feel about sasha's hair because i of course don't want to talk too much about this since i want to leave it more to the experts who do know black hair and all that so please let me know down in the comments on how you felt about her having straight hair so in this concept art they had like a sort of direction with this one when it came to their skin tones like i feel like with um sasha they were like oh we want to make her dark skin but we just we didn't want to <laughs> but like i mean she was def she's definitely a lot um like a lot more browner here but not, I would not claim her to be dark skin actually though, but they were going the right direction, I guess. But then with Yasmin, of course they failed her. She's still not brown, um, still very light skin. Um, but with Sasha, they were going towards it. But again, I would definitely say Sasha would switch with Yasmin because this is more of Yasmin's skin tone and then Sasha should be a lot darker than this. So again, same issue. Okay, so as much as this, these concept parts are all very iconic, don't get me wrong. Like I said, going back to like Yasmin and Sasha, like, I wouldn't even be able to tell you which one is who. Like, I know for like the very far left is of course Chloe, but I don't know for the other, like, the other girls, like the ones that are obviously brown and dark skin, which is Sasha and Yasmin, I don't even know who is who. Like, is Sasha the one in the center? And Yasmin's the one next to Chloe. Like, I don't know. So that's what I meant. Like, as a kid, I always got so confused with who was who. Like, the um, like the early days of Bratz when it was barely coming out with the um, 3D animation. I don't know if you guys remember that one. Uh, when it was, like, one of the songs was um, Living It Up. And one of them was dancing to it, and it was in 3D animation. I'll put um, the clip here.
rapper dancing to living it up and i'm like who is that i'm like is that sasha or yasmin like i couldn't tell who was who because the the girl was so light-skinned that i couldn't tell who was who i was so confused and here is the same thing like same issue again Yasmin should be a lot browner and then Sasha should be a lot darker again like just switch Sasha's skin tone with Yasmin's and then make Sasha a lot darker again it, it's the same issue this is what I mean oh my gosh anyway I just wanted to do that little slideshow to show you guys what I mean by the colorism it was so bad and I just hope now when they do concept art and just concept photos in general when it comes to like releases of new Brad doll lines that they do a lot better and make them the right skin color that they're supposed to for Yasmin and Sasha. Like, please. Anyway, um, but that is all for that. Back to the video. But yeah, like, first let's focus on Sasha though since I'm talking about Sasha. With Sasha, um... In Star and Silent, they literally made her lighter. And it was really weird, because I'm like, um, Sasha is not a light-skinned black woman. She is a dark-skinned black woman. So make her dark-skinned, and there you go. Like, why did they do that? And so I was so, like, disgusted, and I'm like, um, this is not Sasha. Like, that's not Sasha. <laughs> like, this is some other character. <laughs> And so I was like really like taken aback of why they made her, you know, light skin. I was like, what the hell? Obviously at the time when I was a kid, I didn't see it as like, oh, this could be colorism, you know, because I didn't obviously sadly like, have that mindset at the time. And I was just like, oh, this is Sasha, you know. Um, but in fact, I was also quite confused who was who as well. Because going back to the whole situation with um, also Yasmin too, with the colorism issue, I talk about this also later on, but I'm gonna just say it briefly here. When it came to um, Sasha's character and Yasmin, I always tend to get them very confused um, because they always made them so white to the point that I couldn't even tell who was who. I'm like, who's Sasha? Is Sasha this one or is this one Yasmin? Like, I would get them so confused because I'm like, who is supposed to be Sasha? Who is supposed to be Yasmin? Since they were both light skinned. And I'm like, looking back at that, I'm just like, why did they make them so light for? They're not light-skinned women. They're both, Yasmin is brown and Sasha is dark-skinned. So I was just so confused as to why they did that to their characters. And I was just like, what the hell? And so it just very much er erased their characters' identities. And it was just so, so concerning. And so back then looking at that, like I was so confused as a child and I very much understand why I was confused because that was so confusing. Like, why would you change their skin colors? That's so freaking weird. And it's not really like our fault if you like if you were someone who also got confused with that as well. Like, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, it's not your fault because they're they're over here trying to erase their skin colors and trying to make them lighter for some odd reason and. We all got confused and so that's very much their fault but yeah like it's just so sad to see them like lighten their skin because i'm just like they're literally this is a brown woman and this is a dark skin woman keep it that way like what are you doing so there's a lot of colorism in brats and it honestly sucks and it, it heavily happens a lot more like throughout like the franchise um, but definitely now like in the newer one like because now they came out with like a newer Brax series It's like a little short series on TikTok. I don't know if you guys have seen it um, But if you follow the Brats on TikTok or even on other social platforms made them all be properly like the actual right like skin tones and everything like their identities and all that like everything was correct thankfully because maybe someone is you know more educated that is in charge hopefully and yeah like it's properly more better represented now thankfully um but in the past it wasn't so much so yeah but i'm just glad now that there's a newer series and they did it better the new uh, series they changed that part of brats and they're now willing to keep that part of sasha's identity alive 
So, very happy for that. And I'll include the clip here for you guys to see. Talking Brats, girl, you wanna talk? Welcome back to Talking Brats! I'm Felicia, and today you're in for a treat because we're rocking into a special performance by the Brats Rock Angels! <laughs> about all the latest looks. Leave it to you to blend fashion and smoothies. Just to be clear, I don't put the fashion in the smoothies. Of course you don't, boo. Next up, I need a Zodiac check. Talk to me, Yasmin. It's cancer time. Be charismatic, passionate, and manipulative. Oh, not that last one. Just like our favorite cancer, Ariana Grande, you water signs are super hot. <laughs> Jade with our Bratz Total Fashion Makeover! So, I played for seriously, no joke, 11 hours straight. I didn't even use the bathroom. You're gonna love this game. I'm working on unlocking access to the rare shoulder bag, and I get extra coins for sharing on social. I'm getting the Bratz pack totally runway ready. Buddy Boo is here to reward one lucky audience member with their very own gold coin from the game! Thanks, Gecko. Catch, audience people! Oh. 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 oh, someone get that girl a band-aid. Okay, let's move on to Chloe. So with Chloe's character, I don't really have too much to talk about her character, actually. I think she's very much fine with the way she was written. Um, so I don't really have too many things to say about her, actually. I don't really have a lot to say. So hers might be very short. Um, I might actually, no, yeah, I should. I'm going to also mention, because I forgot to include like a section for relationships, which I wish I included in this, but I didn't. I'll just mention it briefly in her section. And also in Yasmin's too, because it's kind of important. We'll see. Um, but with Chloe, let's talk about her. Um, just like I mentioned with the two, the other two girls, um, she's also an adult now and her nickname is angel and she's known to have the passion for vlogging not jade but chloe and um you see this in star and styling and i will put this here and action hi i'm chloe but you can call me angel because that's what i am uh, oh what else should I say? Any dreams, future plans? You know, cool secrets that tell all about the real you. Well, I'm all about expressing myself through my own personal style. A very flashy attitude. And most importantly, fashion. I love to paint and draw. I love to shop at the mall with my friends. I love school, though we do get way too much homework. What else? Oh yeah, I think there should be a bottled water machine in the cafeteria. And more mirrors in the girls' room. Who knows, maybe next year I'll run for student body president. And I'll make that part of my platform. But I can't focus on that now, because this is a very important week. Prom is on Saturday. We've got a lot of work ahead if we want to do it in style. Both her parents are alive, and she does actually have other relatives. Um, I believe they mentioned this throughout like the animated series. I could be wrong, but I believe they do mention this in the show. Um, and if not, maybe they mentioned it in other releases of Rats earlier years. I don't remember. Um, but I'm. But I mean, that's what I saw when I looked into her personal. 
that's what I saw when I looked into her um, her stuff on the internet. Even I know I do know Rafka, so it's like I'm like I'm not. But I'm just like I didn't know if she had relatives or not. I only knew that she had a dad and a mom. That was it. But I don't know about uh, relatives, so I had to look into that, and apparently she does. So, but that's what it says. Um, and for her personality, she is described to be dramatic, playful, and smart. And so, my thoughts on Chloe's character is that she actually tends to remind me of myself, as she tends to overthink about every situation, which I very much do myself. Um, and I very much like how um, she's into sports as well. She's very athletic, and I'm glad that there is this one scene where she proved totally wrong that she can skate just as well as he can because um, there is this scene that I'm talking about. This scene in the show, I believe it's like the very first couple of episodes. I could be wrong, but I think it's like a movie or something. I don't remember, but it's like in the very beginning of Bratz and there's this one scene in the episode or movie um when she's like Dylan's like skating and then Chloe's like can I try he's like are you sure you can handle it and I'm like boy sit down I'm like is it because she's a girl I'm like dude shut up and so obviously she proved him wrong after she skated and you know she got all these compliments and I'm like exactly okay god <laughs> but anyway, I was just like, oh my gosh, shut up, Dylan. Can I try? Are you sure you can handle it? <laughs> and so, yeah, you know Dylan, guys. We all know Dylan. I'm not talking about him in this video essay. But he's just something else. We we don't talk about it. He's uh, he's questionable. N like not knowing things. He's very ignorant towards stuff like that. And that's yeah, Dylan. <laughs> um, but they very much try to always educate him throughout the series when it comes to stuff about women and all that. He's very questionable about that stuff. Like, he'd be kind of sexist sometimes. So I'm like, boy, like, stop, please. Anyway, <laughs> moving on though. Um, but yeah, that's really all I have to say about Chloe. I don't really have anything else to say. That's literally all I wrote for her. So we'll move on now to my queen Yasmin. Um, she's actually my favorite now out of all the girls. Um, but I very much do still love Jay, don't get me wrong, but my favorite now is Yasmin. And for her, it is said that her ethnicity is of Latin descent, but some have also stated as well for her to be all, also Middle Eastern. So it's just in general, like up in the air, nobody knows for sure. Uh, but her personality is to be described as kind, open-minded and caring. And her passion is said to be for writing and to be taking care of animals because she um, she's very much into like writing poems and all that stuff and she's always like you know looking out for animals and all that you can see that throughout the show and the movies cool cat bungee jumping could permanently damage natural vegetation see those they provide a habitat and nourishment for the striped fire-tongued dog snake it's an endangered species and Look at these beautiful colors and see how friendly he is. <laughs> Let's just say I like to play at small, intimate places to a small, select audience. And I just love that part of her character so much. And um, I know I'm kind of jumping 
around. But I forgot to go more in depth about like her um, ethnicity. Yeah, so it's very much unknown about what her ethnicity is. But some tend to claim that she's Latin descent because of um, her, like, in, again, it's in because of the live action. I'm telling you guys, I don't know, that live action is very questionable. And as someone who's, who's Mexican, I very much felt uncomfortable when they were like, hey guys, look, she's, she's Latina, yes, in the live action. And it was literally a white woman playing her and it was very much uncomfortable. Like, we don't talk about that. Um, so I'm just like, mm, I don't know about that. But yeah, like, I feel like they claim her to be of Latin descent, though, because of that part of the, the whole thing with her in the live action being a Latina. Again, I don't claim the live action to be canon, so that's why I'm not for sure that, her, you know, her ethnicity is of Latin descent. Um, so no one knows for sure. Um, but because of, like, previous uh like choices with her character apparently um the creator of rats i'm gonna call i'm just gonna say carter but carter he he actually had like a previous description of um yasmin but i say previous because he probably changed it over time no one knows for sure but apparently he was a if um apparently he did decide for yasmin's character to be of latin descent um, but no one knows for sure exactly if that's remained over the years or if it like changed over time and who knows, maybe he made for Middle Eastern now. We don't know for sure. So that's why I'm like, I don't know if that still remains to be true that she's of Latin descent or if her ethnicity has now changed. So we don't know. So that's why like if you do headcanon her to be a Latina or if you, if you headcanon her to be Middle Eastern, you are very much right and you could just headcanon her anything you want because we don't know for sure you know let me go more in depth of what i mean by like you can headcanon her whatever you want just letting you guys know like you, you could headcanon her whatever you want but as long as of course it's not white because my girl is not white so um don't headcanon her that of course but you can headcanon her like you know she can be, um, like, she can be an Afro-Latina. She can be, um, Asian and a Latina. Or she can be Middle Eastern. Whatever, like, other ethnicity. But as long as it's not, of course, white. Like, you guys can't claim her as, for example, a white Latina. Like, no. No. She is not white. So, <laughs> no. So, yeah. Just wanted to clarify that. And until they, they give her a canon of what her ethnicity is, then that's when the day will come who who knows i don't even know when that day will come because he's been quiet ever since <laughs> so we don't we don't know um but yeah like for me personally um i just consider her to just of course because she's brown skin and i just i'm like yes my brown representation i'm like any i'll eat anything up and i'll be like yes that's my queen you know <laughs> and so just knowing she's a brown girl that's literally what I just love about her character and I'm like that's my representation so I eat it up you know so yeah I take what I get you know but yeah that's just um how I feel about that okay but now going back to just Yasmin's personality and who she is um I love Yasmin because of that same reason of what I was talking about because she looks out of all of the girls she looks like me the most and it's just nice to see someone who is also brown skin and maybe a, La a latina and it's just nice to see someone who looks like me you know and so i really do appreciate that it's very nice to see that and just her loving animals too another trait of hers that i completely adore um because i also love animals i have a dog myself which she came in earlier um and I just love that so much of her as well. Like, just her loving animals. I'm like, yes, I love you so much. Like, I just love animals. Um, but something I do dislike, though, and it's just what I mentioned earlier. It literally is what I mentioned earlier. It's about the whole thing with her being white skin at times. Um, it, again, same issue with Sasha. It's colorism. <laughs> um... They literally whitewashed her so badly and like I 
Okay. Like I did with Sasha already, um, they made her light skin and it was so, <laughs> it was so like, wow, like, okay, okay, Brad, I see how you guys are, like, okay. But obviously as a kid, like I said, I didn't know about colorism at the time because I wasn't aware that was a thing until I got older. And so I was very clueless when I saw that happen and I was just confused. Like, I was literally just confused as a child. I'm like, wait, who's Yasmin? Who's Sasha? I'm like, which one's who? So I was just confused. I didn't know that colorism was a thing at the time in my head until I got older. And I was like, yeah, this is very much colorism. They made them both light skinned. But again, like, you know, sadly, we aren't exposed to those things at a young age, which we should be. Um, but yeah, so they very much made her white. And it was so bad to the point that I didn't even know if she was Sasha or if she was Yasmin. <laughs> I was like, who's who? Um, going back to her whole entire identity situation, I really do wish they could announce that because it's just honestly like a, a mystery. And it would have been great to see like whatever like ethnic group she is because you know of course like you want to see like say for example with me as a latina i would love to see another latina character in like animation because obviously we all need a representation here and so it would have been great to see if she is latina to see that you know um so it would have been really great to see like just in general like what her ethnicity is um but we sadly don't get that that's all i have to say about her um but besides that if we're the four girls before we move on i want to um talk a little bit about like the relationships with both chloe and um yasmin's characters with obviously um their alleged partners i want to say because um well with chloe they finally like confirmed that she's with Cameron but in terms of with Yasmin and Eden I'm not too sure as of now um I'm gonna have to look into that but like with Chloe and Cameron it did they did confirm that they are a thing thankfully after all these years <laughs> like oh my gosh um because it always was hinted at you know and they're always like oh yeah like they're together blah 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 but then they would never confirm like they just wanted us to just head candidate ourselves and to just imagine ourselves but we were like we just wanted to see them be actually candidly together you know in the show and in the movies and all that stuff so we were like come on like can you guys just say they're together but they never did until now finally in the new series on tiktok and so i'm like finally thank goodness and i'll insert the video here for that but in terms of yasmin and eden i'm going to look into that more because i'm not too sure if they said so like on the talking brats show but if not on there i'm gonna look into it um and i'll let you guys know about that too so i looked into it just now when it came to um yasmin and eden being together and sadly no there's still no confirmed news on that so it obviously was always hinted at because they have went on dates i believe in the show but they were never like actually stated to be together so it kind of sucks i'm just like okay whatever so obviously as brats fans we just came to just accept that oh we can just you know head cannon and say they're together like in my heart i think they're together <laughs> um but they never confirmed that so kind of sucks but at least i did it for cameron and chloe so that's good but yeah Sex for Eden and Yasmin, though. So to those who are Yasmin and Eden, um, you know, shippers, I'm sorry. You guys lost this one. <laughs> but now we're going to move on to Birdeen and the Tweebles. So let's first talk about, you know, the little description here. So the Tweebles are Birdeen's interns for her magazine. 
and um, it's called Your Thing, I believe. I've never heard them say anything else. Besides Your Thing magazine. I believe that's what they call it. Your Thing. And they also happen to be the same age as the Bratz also. And Bardeen is said to be in her 30s as she mentions it in an episode. Here's a clip. How old are you? 31. Oops. Uh, let's see. 25. Their goal that they're trying to shoot for is to take down the Bratz magazine and become the number one magazine in Stylesville. And obviously we see that also them just fail miserably. <laughs> They never, sadly, they sadly never reached that. But, hey, I mean, that's what they get for being weird about it. So, now let me just go more in depth about their characters and all that. So, I'm going to first start with the Tweebles. I honestly feel bad for the Tweebles. And this is because they're seen as unattractive just because of the way they look. And honestly, it's sad because it's literally just for, like, they dress like that because it's Birdine's brand. Since they work for her, they have to dress like that, you know? And so, um, that's why they always look pink and they all look very, you know, like, very Barbie-like, I guess you could say, because it's Birdine's brand. And, um, it's quite sad, you know? Because here's the thing, um, if you guys don't know, because I that I literally said specifically interns, that's not her um, nieces. Because I actually thought growing up as a child, I always thought they were related to Birdie, but they're not. They're just her interns. And I only personally thought they were related to her because they were blonde and they very much looked like her. And so I was like, oh, okay, that's probably her nieces or something. No, they're just her interns. And it's just sad because I'm like, I wonder, because when I was writing this script and I was just thinking about it more, I'm like, I wonder, did they even look, like, did they ever look different before? Like, did they always look like that? Or did they have, like, different hair color before? Did they have, like, you know, different outfits they would wear? I've always wondered. Okay, we gotta speed this up because the camera died. I'm almost done anyway. Um, so going back to the Tweebles, yeah, I honestly felt bad about their characters. Like, they deserve so much more, you know? Like, I feel like they could have become better, like, characters if they didn't work for Birdie, honestly. Um, like, I wish there was a point in, like, the plot, um, when they turned their backs on Birdie and they never worked for her ever again. I would have really liked that for them because they definitely, again, they deserve better. Um, they very much just got brainwashed into thinking what they're doing is something that is for them, when really it's just for Birdie, which is honestly sad. And now moving on to Birdie. I don't hate her character, but neither do I love her character. It's like neutral. Because I'll be honest, I love Birdie for her, like, humor like she's funny i'm sorry like she is funny she's hilarious and that's like the one aspect i completely love about her character is how funny she is like that girl she says the funniest things and i'm like i always find it hilarious um but one some aspects that i don't like though is that a one being that she's so obsessed with being young and I just don't like that because they paint 30 to be an old age when it's not like hello um and every time the tweebles talk about Birdine's age they make it sound like she's so old but again she's not and this is just very much the show just being ages towards their older characters and it's very much shown throughout other older characters also um Another trait of hers I dislike is also the way she treats the Tweebles. It's honestly concerning, like she makes them do all these dangerous things just to get her magazine to the top. Like as a child, I thought it was funny. Like I was like, oh my god, this is hilarious, haha, uh -huh, you know. But the older I got, I just find it now to be concerning. I'm like girl, these are literal children working for you and you're making them do all these dangerous stuff that can risk their lives. Like you're the older one, you're the one that already basically, I'm like, I know you're, you're still young, of course she's still young, but like, 
she basically already lived a longer time of her life and these girls are barely in the like, they're barely gonna become like 18 you know they're still young they still have so much more to go with their lives so i'm like can you you should give your life away you know like you should be the one to risk your life and give these girls more of a chance you know to go out there and live their lives like they're still so young you know um they never got the actual experience yet of their lives that she has so that's definitely something i was like girl like don't be selfish don't only care about yourself like that's that's concerning <laughs> anyway also, I just wish there was a point when she treated them nicely, honestly. And actually helped them to get their Your Thing magazine to the top. Because it's like, I mean, hello, you guys, she, that's her interns and obviously she's the boss. I'm like, she could have had like a, a good plan in mind and they all could have worked together and boom, make it into like a whole thing, you know? But they ended up not doing that, so obviously they ended up always failing in the end. So I'm just like, I kind of wish we saw that, you know? Like, I kind of wish we saw, like, at least one time they actually did get their Your Thing magazine up in the run and, you know, people got their magazines, at least a couple people. Maybe not as big as the Bratz, but hey, they got their magazine out, you know? So that would have been cool. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about the Tweebles and Burdine. Now we're going to finally move on to the boys and then we'll go into the movie section and that should be it. So now let's talk about the Bratz boys. Um, so for them, I'm only going to talk about just in general like all of the boys. I'm not going to be like, oh let's do specific Cameron and Dylan, no we're just talking about them in general. So about the Bratz boys. I personally don't like how they dip them. In fact, I think they were very much done terribly <laughs> because um, they were very much the same. Same personality, same style and everything. Like they all felt like replicas of each other. I'm, I have to say it, like it was so bad. Like growing up as a child, I personally never found them to be interesting. And again, it's because of that very much reason, like them just being the same. They literally, nothing stood out from any of them. Like all of them were just very much the same way. Nothing was different about any of them. So I was just like, oh, they're very, very much interesting. Like they're not interesting at all. Like, I'm sorry, like, I'm sorry, they aren't. And I just honestly wish they made them more unique. Given that the Bratz brand are known to be fashion dolls, it's quite questionable why they didn't do anything with the Bratz boys. Like, what? Um, but I feel like this has to definitely do with the time the Bratz took, like, place in. Like, again, the Bratz came out in the 2000s. And obviously at that time, um, if boys were seen as dressing very nicely, you know, and all that, they were fashionable. People would consider them to be too girly, of course, you know, toxic masculinity. Um, and I feel like Carter was like, going back to what I was saying about like the boys and everything, um, because I got cut off rudely because of my freaking battery. Stupid camera. Yeah, it cut me off. Very rude. Um, but yes, going back to like um, Carter, um, the creator of Bratz. I feel like he was either like very much scared to put the, these traits of the Bratz boys or maybe at the time he had like a toxic masculinity mindset, I don't know. We don't know. But I personally want to go for like the first mindset as it does make more sense given that now like the Bratz boys in the newer content, they have more of like a sense of style I would say. Um, and that's shown like in newer content, so I'll insert like a clip here. And we're back to talking Bratz! Dylan is here for a moment of redemption. Welcome, Dylan! <laughs> Dylan! Okay, you have some tea to spill. We pulled a clip of your prior offense. Is it Halloween already? What are you wearing? <laughs> It's not what it looks like, Felicia. I just kind of had a crush on her. I wasn't being a jerk. I have trouble, you know, 
expressing myself. Hold up. You like somebody, you treat them right. I know that now, Felicia. You all help me see the way. I'm changed. We love you, Dylan, but on this show, you have to groove it to prove it. Oh, I'll prove it. <laughs> really did that but yeah that concludes the brats boys section i'm moving on, on like kind of fast now because i don't want the camera to die again and i don't want this video to be too long so we're going through um but yeah that's the end of that section and we'll move on now to the movies all right so for the movies of the brats um the movies were very much more like their own plot. It did not really stick to like the canon series uh, plot. So a lot of the movies plots were interesting, but there were some also that were quite questionable that did not age well at all. I'm going to put more emphasis on one specifically, and that being um, the Brash Genie Magic movie. You guys already know. Um, so growing up, I actually watched this movie as a little girl, but I never understood how wrong it was as a concept until I got older. The whole idea of genies and turning that into a whole aesthetic in the movie was just so wrong. They, they did cultural appropriation. And it's not an appreciation. It's not. Because some made the argument in the past that it's culture appreciation, but it's not because they literally used someone else's culture and made it into like a fashion statement. They made it into a trend. Like, how is that not weird? Like, would you consider that appreciation? No. So, this whole idea of genies being used as a focus in the movie is weird given that the main character is Middle Eastern and the myth comes from the Middle East and Africa. Um, yeah, so it's very stereotypical to make like the character who is Middle Eastern um, to be a genie. But definitely if I have viewers from the Middle East, um, like whoever is watching this and they're like either Middle Eastern or they're of African descent. Um, if you guys do watch my videos, please let me do know in the comments down below uh, what you guys think about this whole movie in general. Because as someone who's obviously not Middle Eastern or of African descent, I'm just a guest in your guys' communities. So um, you definitely know more than I do. So please let me know in the comments down below if you guys um, do watch my videos and you do more, obviously know more, more about that. So please let me know in the comments. Yeah, that's all I have to say about the movies. And just in particular, just like the movies in general, like I don't have like a huge problem with them. I find them also just as entertaining, but the whole thing with like the movies being also like worth money and knowing that like it's, and, and like an exception with obviously like star starring in silent that's like a whole separate like category like obviously that sh that movie was cute it was good um but we're t i'm talking more about the 3d movies the series um they used the same animation that they used for the show and so it was like was that really worth money i don't know about that you know because i'm not someone to judge when it comes to like stuff that is good and it's just low budget. Like, in fact, I do appreciate a lot of movies or shows like that. Um, but it's like, the animation for the Bratz isn't bad, but it was pretty lazy. <laughs> and I say this because there's a lot of times in the movies and the show where they would constantly use, like they would literally reuse animations just because they, it felt like they were rushed or something. I don't know. Like, it just felt like they were trying to put the movies or show out whenever they could so they can get more money. Because obviously, like, a lot of people liked Brass at the time, including me. So everyone was, like, you know, just really obsessed with Brass. So they were like, okay, in order to get the money, guys, we need to just consistently put out Brats 
and that was by reusing animations too. Like I understand, I understand why. I mean, it's faster that way and I get it. But they did it so much to the point it's so noticeable that you're just like... And this is just the same thing over and over again. You know? So, because I know like with other companies like Disney, for example, they've also done that. But it's not as noticeable compared to the brats. Like, it was so noticeable. Like, it just happens way too much and that's why I'm like, okay. Like, it was this really worth my money? I don't know about that. So, yeah, like, obviously, if you were a kid at that time, of course, you would buy the movie. You're just like, oh my god, I'm a kid. Like, you know, I want to watch the movie now. So, of course, like, that was, like, the only way to watch the movie anyway. Like, all the movies. So, I understand. But it's, like, I don't even know how much they cost at the time. And if it did range to be like i don't know 16 to 20 dollars i don't know if that's worth it you know like no offense um but yeah just in general like the movies they were okay weren't amazingly like the best movies ever but they were cute for like obviously in general like the plots and all that stuff for its time so i would say they were okay um but yeah that's just for the movie section there let's get into the final section which is the plot of the show and I do also want to mention also other stuff with that as well um, that I did not mention in previous sections so for the plot of the show it was simply the girls wanting to get their fashion trends on magazines and the Tweebles and Berdine trying to ruin their plans each episode and honestly it was very uncreative at times like, I honestly wish they could have explored more with the plot and give the girls um, other things to do besides focus on their magazine. But yeah, after watching the show after a while, it gets pretty boring. <laughs> like, you're watching it and you're just like, okay, like, it's pretty, like, repetitive, you know? It doesn't change, you know? Like, you just consistently watch it. Like, it's not a show that you would sit down and actually focus and watch it. Like, you would just have it in the background. Which, that goes to show, like, you know, it's not as crazily interesting. Like, I'm not saying, like, obviously, like, The Brats isn't worthy of watching. It's, like, a funny, like, show to watch, you know? Like, I would say it's pretty, like, hilarious, in my opinion. Um, but in terms of, like, having a show that you really want to, like, pay attention to and, you know, analyze the crap out of, I don't think that's the type of show it is, really. Like, it's not, like, a crazy type of analyzing type of show it's more of just like oh it's all in your face and something that you can just right away take away from you know so you don't really have to do too much analyzing with it and that just goes to show like it's not as crazily interesting compared to like other franchises so yeah like it's just pretty basic <laughs> is what i'm trying to get at and i only watch it now personally for the humor like i just said um, but not really for the plot. So, yeah. Like, it's not a terrible show. I'm not saying it's terrible. I'm just like, I feel like it could have done more. And that basic, basically just con concludes it to be just very basic. And if I were to rank it, and now that I'm older, I would say like a... Like a 7. Be more realistic here. Maybe like a 6.5. Okay. But again, it's not terrible. Like, it was definitely good for its time, and I appreciate, like, Bratz for that, like, for its time. The representation they put in with, like, the Bratz in general, with it being so many, like, people of color in it, I really do appreciate that a lot about Bratz, and that's something for its time I really do appreciate. Um, so going more into, like, the whole thing with, uh, relationships, because I forgot to mention that in previous sections, I heard that, um, Nefra and Roxy, they also are a couple, which I find amazing. That's beautiful. I'm glad they made them into a couple, um, which is great because, like I said, I mean, they're not, like, major characters, but that's cool that they have another confirmed, like, couple, because as i mentioned already they don't really say in your face like hey like these two characters are together they're just like hey it's up to you guys like do you want them to be together like they want us to just assume you know and so it's like no like just confirm please 
Um, so I'm glad they have like another couple that they also confirmed to be together as well. And also the latest show, like I said, if you watch it on TikTok. Um, and another couple that was hinted to possibly be a thing. Um, was said to be like Jade and Dylan, I think. But with Dylan, here's the thing with Dylan. Like I said, I don't have like a section of him specifically, but I'm just gonna get it over with and just say it here. The thing with Dylan's character is that when it comes to relationships, this man was with every girl in every single freaking movie and the show. Like he would always be with a different girl every single time. And I'm just like, okay, um, who does this guy like? Like, hello? Like, it was so confusing at times so like, as a kid i'm like why is he over here going with different girls like i thought he was with this other girl you know like i was so confused as a kid but the more i got older i'm just like this dude is such a player like he goes with every single girl every single time and i'm like does he not like have a certain girl he wants to be with like hello and he makes it sound like it's forever and then he's with a new girl in the next thing like what so i don't know man Dylan's so interesting <laughs> and it's just like it's funny to know that they made him apparently a Leo and I'm just like yeah that's very stereotypical but whatever <laughs> like okay because you know how people always say like Leos are the type to always be with every single person you know they like the stereotypical like way of thinking of a Leo and so I was just like okay whatever um but yeah I'm like questionable that they made him a Leo but anyway, um, but yeah, that's just the thing with Dylan, because people always speculated that him and Jade had a thing for each other too, um, but it was never like candidly said like, oh yeah, they have a crush on each other. It was just like in your like face to assume like, oh, you think they like each other? You had can in it, you know? They never said specifically like, oh yeah, they are. So. Yeah, that's a, a little thing that went on in the show as well, and in the movies a little bit. Um, very interesting. And then Sasha too, she had a couple relationships as well. And that was actually shown in the show and movies, I believe. I don't know about the movies. I think only in the show, but I don't remember. Um, but yeah, she dated a couple times as well. But yeah, that basically sums that up for like the plot overall. It was very much that, you know, like it was just four girls in their high school journey and them just being a fashion icons and starting trends on their magazines and yeah. Along with the Tweebles and Birdine trying to ruin their plan and that was basically it. Um, so con to conclude this overall, would I say Bratz was a good show? I personally think it was good for its time and definitely holds up pretty well today. Um, I really like how inclusive Rats was with their doll line and seeing that for its time it's honestly shocking given that there wasn't that many doll lines with dolls of color during the 2000s and the 90s. So seeing that Bratz was like one of the first to um, come out with very diverse like backgrounds of dolls that was really cool to see. Um, and especially for a kid that I am obviously as a child and so I'm just like seeing obviously that as a child um, it was great to see that and so I really do appreciate um, seeing that growing up and obviously since usually the things that I was exposed to as a child I wasn't really exposed to a lot of like dolls of color and so seeing them be representations of like dolls of color I was like this is so cool and I just felt happy you know and so seeing that as a kid that was really cool to see and yeah so that is all I have to say about the brats I might have not have covered everything but if you do have like any questions or if you have any other things that I did not mention in this video that you would like to talk to me about in the comments down below i would very much love to talk about it so if i didn't catch everything that i didn't like mention in this video at all um please let me know in the comments down below and i will answer your comment and yeah so that will conclude this video thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully i can get another video out 
because I'm trying to shoot for three videos again every month, but so far it is not going so well. <laughs> but we're gonna try because I'm currently editing um, a reaction video, which is for Spy Family. That reaction video is out now, so please go watch. I worked really hard on that video as just for all those reaction videos in general, those take forever. So please go show your support on those videos. Very, I would very much appreciate that. Okay, on to the video. So I hope you guys are watching that because those take a very long time to edit. So please, please go watch those, please, I think. Because those take so long to edit. Um, so yeah, uh, I will be doing that because I'm currently editing that video and hopefully I can get this video out as soon as possible also. So yeah, that is all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment for more. And bye!